Hello to you all. Uh, I hope you're all well and keeping safe uh, and having a, a good time at school, uh, learning lots and uh, enjoying yourselves. Uh, as I look out my window today, as you can see, I'm at home. But as I look out my window today, the sun is shining and the daffodils are all swaying in the breeze. It looks absolutely beautiful out there. Uh, as I said before, spring is in the air and with spring comes Easter. So Easter is well on its way. Next week is Holy Week, which is the lead up to Easter. And uh, there'll be lots going on in the church, although it'll be uh, a bit limited this year because of uh, the pandemic. But there'll still be big celebrations about Jesus's death and resurrection. So with that lead up to Easter, I hope you're getting ready for the big day and for all the chocolate eggs that you'll no doubt have but also for a break from school, a holiday, and to enjoy the spring and time outdoors. Uh, after our first song, we're going to have the Easter story, not told by me, told by somebody else for a change. Um, and then after that, I'll be back for our prayers and to wish you all uh, a happy Holy Week, but I'll see you next week for our Easter service. So we'll have a song and then the Easter story. In the city of Jerusalem, everyone was talking about the amazing things that Jesus had done. Jesus was a great teacher. He healed the sick and even raised the dead. When Jesus had entered the city of Jerusalem, everyone had lined the street and waved palm branches in celebration and shouted, Hosanna to the King! The Jewish leaders were not happy that Jesus was so popular. Some were even claiming that Jesus was the Son of God that made the Jewish leaders mad. 
they needed to find a way to get rid of Jesus. Later that week, Jesus celebrated the Jewish feast of Passover with his disciples. At the meal, Jesus took bread and wine and explained that his body would be broken like the bread and his blood would be poured out like the wine. But the disciples didn't really understand what he meant. Is someone trying to hurt you, Jesus? They asked. They will have to get through us first. We are prepared to die for you. Jesus replied, When trouble comes, all of you will leave me. Peter said, No way! Even if all the others run away, I will never leave you. Jesus said, Peter, before the morning, you will deny that you even know me three times. Peter was troubled by Jesus' words. But one of Jesus' disciples, Judas, was already making plans to betray Jesus. Judas went to the Jewish leaders. He asked them, how much will you pay me if I lead you to where Jesus is? They agreed to give Judas 30 pieces of silver to help them catch Jesus. Later that night, Jesus was praying in a garden called Gethsemane. As he prayed, Judas approached. With him were the Jewish leaders and some Roman soldiers. Judas greeted Jesus with a kiss. That was the sign Judas had agreed with the guards, so as they knew it was Jesus. The guards rushed forward and arrested Jesus. You're coming with us, they said. The chief priest wants a word with you. It was a hard night for the disciples. As Jesus was questioned by the authorities, Peter stood outside in the courtyard, keeping warm by a fire. A man recognised him. I know you, he said. You're one of Jesus' followers. Peter was scared and he replied, "Um, you, You must be mistaken. I don't know Jesus. Then a woman said, Yes, it is you. I've seen you with him. Peter said, I think you have me confused with someone else. A third person said, Your accent gives you away. You are one of his disciples. Peter said loudly, I tell you, I don't know Jesus. Just then, the cockerel crowed. Peter remembered Jesus' words. Peter, before the morning, you will deny that you even know me three times. Peter ran out of the courtyard and wept. How could he let Jesus down like that? He was supposed to be Jesus' friend. How could he say that he didn't even know him? Jesus was taken to a Roman governor called Pontius Pilate. Pilate didn't think that Jesus had done anything wrong, so he tried to find a way to release Jesus. It was the governor's custom at the feast to release one prisoner. Pilate thought this was an ideal way to set Jesus free. There was a notorious criminal called Barabbas that everyone hated, so Pilate brought him out with Jesus. Pilate asked the crowd, Which of these prisoners do you want me to set free, Jesus or Barabbas? It was an obvious choice, but the Jewish leaders had stirred up hatred for Jesus among the people. So the people shouted, Barabbas! Give us Barabbas! What shall I do with Jesus? asked Pilate. The crowd shouted, We want him dead! Crucify him! Crucify him! Jesus was put to death on a cross on a hill called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. With him were two criminals, one on his left and the other on his right. One criminal turned to Jesus and said, If you are the Son of God, save yourself and us. The other said, Don't you fear God? We're here because we deserve to be, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said to him, Today you will be with me in paradise. As Jesus died, the sky turned dark for three hours. The ground shook and the curtain in the temple was torn from top to bottom. A Roman soldier who watched him die said, surely this was the Son of God. Some of Jesus' friends took his body and placed Jesus in a tomb. A large stone was rolled across the entrance and the tomb was sealed shut 
and Roman soldiers guarded the tomb. Three days later, the women went down to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body. But when they got to the tomb, they were surprised to find that the stone had been rolled away and the tomb was empty. They went inside and two angels said to them, Why are you looking for Jesus here? This is a place for dead people, but Jesus is alive. The women could not believe it. Could it really be true? As they raced back to tell the other disciples, there in the garden was Jesus. It really was true. Jesus had risen from the dead. This is a day to celebrate, they said. Jesus is alive. I'm sure you enjoyed that Easter story, not told by me for a change, but actually done in Lego. I thought that would be uh, quite nice for uh, a change. Um, so we're going to pray now. We're going to offer to God ourselves and we're going to pray ready for Easter and all that God's gifts to us are. Let us pray. Dear God, we give you thanks for all the gifts that you give us, for the gift of school, home, family, friends, teachers, all the wonderful gifts you give us for the gift of spring and the sunshine beginning to, to come back into our lives. We give you thanks for the Easter story, for the sacrifice that Jesus gave us through his death and his resurrection, so that we may have good and strong and better lives. And we pray, Lord, this Easter that you will be with us, that you will give us the strength to think of others, as well as ourselves, to do what is right, to look after those in need, particularly any in our immediate circle, our family and our friends. We give you thanks, Lord, that you are always with us. We look forward to the Easter holidays for the break and that we may then come back to school refreshed and renewed, ready to start again and looking forward to the end of this pandemic. 
And so we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as I said, I'll be back next week to do an Easter celebration service. Uh, we can't be in church at the moment, but hopefully maybe towards the end of the year, if all goes well, we can have a service in church before you finish for the summer. But we'll have to see how that goes. Um, so I'll see you next week here on, on video and we'll celebrate Easter. But before then, think about the Easter story. Think about God's love for all of us and be good to each other. Keep safe and well. Bye.